You're a polyglot. I am. That means you can speak multiple languages. In essence, yes. How many languages can you speak? My standard is that if I can hold a conversation with a native speaker of that language and convey and get any sort of message across that I would want, uh, with flexibility, with mistakes, of course, then I would consider myself to be able to speak that language. And by that definition, I can speak eight to ten. All right. Spanish, Russian, Mandarin, Chinese, Portuguese, French, German, Dutch, and a little bit of Italian and Finnish. Wow. Um, which one's been the hardest? Ooh. Um, Probably Mandarin. You know what? A lot of people would say Mandarin, but just because of the circumstances uh, that were around me when I learned Mandarin, it wasn't all that difficult because I was an exchange student and I lived I lived uh, in Taiwan for a year. Oh, wow. So um, I was surrounded by the language constantly. I, I lived with people who only spoke Mandarin. I went to school with people who only spoke Mandarin. And then I would go home at night and watch TV with my family, uh, all in Mandarin. People always throw around these words like easiest and hardest. Um, but really, it's all subjective. Mm -hmm. And this perceived difficulty is only measured by how different it is from what you already know. Because as humans, we already have an incredible capacity for language. Mm. So we can learn any language in the world with any system, no matter how different it is or difficult, if you will. It'll just take longer for our brains to adapt and get used to it. Um, so all the more difficult languages are is uh, they just have new concepts and uh, different sounds that we're not, not used to that will take more time for our brains to get used to and to practice and master. So what was the hardest one for you? Um, Russian was quite difficult. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Russian is difficult. Yeah. You have a new alphabet, new sounds. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, I was so motivated to learn it where it was just a breeze. I, I didn't once stop and think, wow, this is so difficult. I'm going to quit. Mm. I just kept thinking, wow, this language is so beautiful. So you're 20. I am. Have you traveled everywhere that you speak? No, actually no. Um, uh, the vast majority of languages that I know, I've never been to a place where it's been predominantly spoken. Okay. And I think that's a really big myth that people have is um, if you're going to learn a language really well, you have to be in the country where it's spoken, but it's absolutely false. Um, and that's just because of the internet. Like there, there are websites and services out there where you can go online and uh, talk to native speakers in whatever language you want. And um, because there's always going to be someone else uh, who, who's learning your language. And we're so lucky because we're English native speakers and it's the inter international language. Everyone wants to learn English. Mm -hmm. So it, it's super easy for someone like me to go on the internet and say, okay, I want to find someone to practice Russian with. And within five or 10 minutes, I can find someone, schedule an appointment, and boom, you got yourself some Russian practice. What, what site? Um, Italki is the most popular one. Italki.com. It's free? Yeah, absolutely free. Wow. Yeah, it's an incredible resource. Yeah, that's crazy. You, uh, you read uh, Crime and Punishment in Russian? Yeah. So you do understand that alphabet. What's it called again? Cyrillic. Cyrillic alphabet. Cyrillic. Привет, как дела? Привет, все хорошо. А ты? Хорошо, очень. Это весело? Да, да, мне очень весело быть здесь с Андрюном, с тобой. <laughs> and that's about where I, I cut off, yeah. Where, where did you learn Russian? I just I just have a few friends that know it, and I've been doing it on Duolingo. You go oh, on there? Oh, it's awesome, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's another thing. Uh, if we're talking about resources online, internet resources, it's so easy. It's easier than ever for anybody to go on the internet and learn a language nowadays. Are you kind of inherently smart, though? Like, are you good at math <laughs> and science? You get A's and stuff? You know, in high school, I was actually pretty average in terms of grades. Um, a lot of that has changed now that I'm in college, um, but I think that's just because I'm studying things that I'm enjoying, whereas in high school, I had a lot of trouble. So, um, but I think that what really separates me from other people is that I have insatiable curiosity yeah, yeah. to learn new things, and I have this desire to be constantly evolving my comprehension of the world and the people. and. Um, you know, not just languages, that applies to everything. Um, but I, I don't think I have any sort of cognitive advantage, inherent cognitive advantage over anybody else. And so I, there's italki. What's another thing that really helped you learn? 
there's something that's really important in language learning, and I think, uh, well, it's just comprehensible input. And all that refers to is to authentic content that you can listen and read to at the same time that is made for or by native speakers. Like watching French TV, you mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, with subtitles, it's a great way to learn. Mm -hmm. or, and it's also a great way to kind of validate your progress, right? Because if you're able to sit back and really enjoy a French movie, yeah. um, then, you know, you, you've really accomplished something great. What's the best language to learn if you want to make learning other languages easier? Like the language that has the most overlap with other languages. Okay, this is a very interesting question because it also depends on how you interpret it. So there are these things called constructed languages, which was created by someone with the purpose of being easy. Um, and the most famous of which is Esperanto. It was made in the late 19th century, I believe, by a Polish linguist. I forget his name. Um, but the point of it was that um, speakers of Germanic and Romance languages could pick up Esperanto really, really easily. This guy sat down one day and said, man, I really feel like making a language today. <laughs> he like invented a language. Yeah, wow. yeah. And um, the point of it was to have this like, global international language like, so that we can all be united under one language. English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to an extent, right? Yeah, yeah. But that was his vision. Mm -hmm. That if, if everybody, the idea was that if everybody spoke the same language, we would all understand each other and there would be no more war. But he couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because uh, although Esperanto was super, super easy to learn for uh, speakers of Romance and Germanic languages, it, it excluded a large part of the world's population, anyone who spoke uh, African or Asian languages. And since language is deeply ingrained and tied in with culture, mm -hmm. it was a complete flop, complete failure. Yeah. Um, and as far as one single language that will make learning a lot of other things easier. It really depends on the language you want to learn. Hmm. Um, if you want to learn a Slavic language, then I think Russian is your best bet. Right, to like learn Estonian or yeah. Ukrainian. Well, yeah. Estonian is actually in a different family oh. of languages. Hmm. It's, I believe it's in the Uralic family um, with uh, Hungarian hmm. and maybe Lithuanian. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. Hmm. Um, but no matter what, um, if you learn a language in a certain language family, then it'll be infinitely easier to learn other languages in the same family. So that's why a lot of people study Latin at university, because there's so much shared vocabulary in modern languages. Uh -huh. even, even if Latin is a dead language and it's not spoken on this earth anymore, it will help you understand other languages that, that are derived from Latin. You know Latin? No. <laughs> <laughs> but does Latin, that spreads to even Russian and Spanish? To an extent, yeah. Mm. Uh, there, there are loan words. Um, I'll use English as an example. Um, but even in the very far east, in East Asian languages, um, these languages adopt English words. They're called loan words. Mm. So... Um, I would love someone to correct me if I'm wrong here, but I heard one time that there's no Korean word for menu. So they just say the English word menu. Mm. Can you say want to jump back to my place and pop in a Blu-ray in Mandarin? In Mandarin? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is hilarious because um, I only know how to say Blu-ray in Mandarin. Man, that language. <laughs> That's thank you, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we have all these preconceived notions about people from all around the world. Yeah. And most of the times, they're based on absolutely nothing, mm. right? You, we just, we might see one portrayal of like a Russian or a German in an American TV show, and then we'll accept it as fact. But all of the Germans and the Russians that I've met, they've been nothing but incredibly warm and friendly and hospitable people. Yeah. I, I think if there's one thing that I've learned from traveling and speaking languages with people is that we're all so much more similar than we think we are. We constantly have this us versus them mentality. Yeah, like well, we especially are, America. 
yeah, like we're united under the flag of America, right? And mm -hmm. um, it's us versus them. Like, oh, those, those Russians, those Chinese, those whatever. Mm -hmm. They're so weird and twisted and backwards. But we're all we're all just humans, and we all have the same needs and values. We were just brought up in different ways. If he could only pick two languages, which ones? Is that including English or? After English. So. Oh, after English. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I would say probably Spanish and Russian. Yeah. Because they're both very widely spoken, and they're two languages that I love dearly. What's his favorite swear word from any language? Oh, that's Blat. a tough one. Is, is that, did I do that? Bliet. 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 Like if, if you stub your toe in the, in the door, you can be like, ah, oh, bliet. Something like that. Hmm. But um, my favorite swear word is definitely uh, verga, la verga. La verga. Yeah, it just means dick in Mexican Spanish. Hmm. But I love it because it's it's used in so many phrases and expressions that are so uniquely Mexican and hmm. incredibly charming. Is it true that learning multiple languages unlocks and opens up different parts of the brain that you didn't know about? Oh, absolutely, yes. How so? Um, so in every single new word or phrase that you learn in another language, you're opening up neural pathways in your brain. Hmm. And as you open up these new neural pathways by the thousands, um, the other pathways in your brain are going to become stronger. Mm. And when you learn a language, you're not just learning new words uh, for things that you already assign meaning to. You're learning more, even if it's unconsciously, about your own culture, about your own language, and of course about the foreign culture and language. Because as you pick up these new words and phrases, and discuss them and use them to communicate with other people in a system that is unfamiliar to you, you're constantly reflecting on your own system of communication. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.